you can actually base this on on, on evidence. Uh, you can make a business case effectively with the available evidence. One of the papers you can perfectly use um, is uh, is the one that I've shown you. Um, I I don't know how exactly how it works in your country, but I I, I have been recently working in before I came back to Belgium in another hospital, and how I could make the business case for the hospital to invest in the monitors were just by showing how much Sugamadex was being used in a blind manner and mm -hmm. what were the potential saving costs or by actually just using targeted antagonization. And that, in my case, was enough. So if you also factor in the reduction of post-operative pulmonary complications and how much this potentially also costs intensive care uh, admissions, the extra uh, the extra days that a patient has to stay in the hospital because he just developed a pneumonia, a pneumonia aspiration, for example. These are also highly uh, theoretical, but in the meantime, there's a huge body of evidence to support the arguments that you will be making on the cost-saving potential of just adopting a neuromuscular monitor. And again, you have EMG and you have also uh, EMG and AMG. EMG tends to, to work with consumables, um, but you also have quantitative monitors not based in consumables. So you can make this like a single acquisition cost, uh, not something that is a recurring cost. So in mm -hmm. that sense, there's definitely uh, there's definitely a business case for, uh, for convincing. And of course, um, that might perhaps be also an extra effort you that you might be having to undertake is just that the educational effort um as i guess like as, as you have seen from the study of dr kami we just does not take uh it is not enough just to place a monitor in the operating room um you need again to uh, to involve your colleagues in the in the project show them how to use them and actually make them aware of all of the potential improvement of care that you will be doing by just making uh, quantitative monitoring a one uh, for example one uh, unwanted icu admission because of a post-op pneumonia uh, what that costs uh, in the icu uh, as a as a net cost but also uh, an emotional um, uh, pay for, for the patient and his families or her families um, that does not outweigh the costs of monitoring devices second that's not obviously something that probably depends from country to country but for example in belgium um, when something is in guidelines the way between or the gap between guidelines and coming into law i mean a real law that can be used in in medical legal issues is not that uh, long is not that far is not that great that gap i mean um, the most important thing is obviously that we 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 use nmt monitoring and interpret it for the safety of our patients and the quality of the the, the medical practice we perform but you may not forget that medical legal issues may be behind the corner as well so as well for those things um, uh, hospitals, departments need to invest in NMT monitoring and need to use it.